<laughs> Sometimes we get the I think, in my own personal opinion, for such as it's worth. And then again, maybe it's worth a lot. <laughs> but in my own personal opinion, I think we get too carried away sometimes about reading or thinking or doing and trying to be so conservative that we're no liberally minded or so liberal that we're not conservatively minded or that we're so minded that we're not liberal or conservative. <laughs> Boy, I think that God in his sovereignty, that God in his ability, that God in his almighty power can use someone like me for someone like you. Really? You think? <laughs> Well, but, 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 but how? Well, frankly, let me miss my credentials. I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't go to Bible school. Um, I didn't get a THD, a PhD, or a THD. As a matter of fact, I don't think I got any of those things that everyone else got. And they got a degree. But sometimes I think I got something better. As a matter of fact, if there's one area of pride that I really need to repent, I think it's in theology. Because me personally, I have no problem arguing with them about it and debating all the theological premises and attitudes and actions that theologians have and coming up with solutions that they don't seem to consider. Because you see, when you specialize in one area, you're ignorant in another area. But when you generalize, sometimes in all areas, you become a specialist in all and a master of none. No. The reality is, is that God can use those experiences of a variety to apply it to himself who covers all aspects of humanity by his sovereignty. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, to give you an example, all my Christianity comes from sci-fi. No, he's not going to say he's a Trekkie. No. But Leonard Nimoy is God. I'm mean, kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's William Shatner, of course. No. But sci-fi had the ability to expand people's minds so that you could imagine greater than what you are, so you could understand and conceive of concepts that a lot of times people that rely on only being conservative can't expand in liberality the notion that God can do whatever he wants to because he's greater than our understanding and we are lesser in our perspective because we don't have the mind of God but we put on the mind of Christ and we become transformed by the renewing of the mind of God with the purpose of the will of God of Christ Jesus. Right? Or that we can be dispossessed of our own spirit, but we can put that spirit of God down in us and we can say, yeah, 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 to the Holy Spirit because we feel like we're possessed of the Holy Spirit. Yes! Yay! <laughs> Boy. Easily, as opposed to those who were so concerned that they said, I don't think the gifts of the Spirit are for today because I think that they were thrown away because they no longer apply to the way that we do it today. John MacArthur, eat your heart out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Should I have said that? No, of course not. But the point is, is that God is who we trust. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. We don't lean in our own understanding. So, if you tell me that a donkey can speak, because I got a sci-fi background, I had no problem with it. To me, it's like, of course. So does the seagull, and so does so many other things that God has used in my life, you know, to kind of like, Michael, get my attention. Michael, get my attention. Michael, he's even spoke to me direct. God can't do that. He only speaks in his written word, and he only does it by way of inspiring the parts of the written word that look like they glow with gold. 
And it's only in the King James that God, God, God comes down and speaks to us. I think God spoke to me in John Stewart once. No, not John Stewart. Neither heathen. I think he's a Jew. <laughs> Oi, can God speak to Jews? Maybe. But God chooses the instrument he uses. He doesn't care what length of your hair is, or if you've got a tie, or if you're a man, a woman, a child. Because, no offense, much as they say that a man can't teach a woman, or a woman can't teach a child, and a woman can't teach this, and a woman can't teach that, and a man can't teach this, and a man can't do this, and a man can't do that. The only thing I've ever seen is that I've never seen a man give birth to a child yet. I've never seen a woman as a high priest. Um, other than that, <laughs> well, I've never seen a woman as God. Careful. Don't go there. Remember, women were created from man, you know, and they kind of like took a rib and, wow, came up with a good improvement. <laughs> Caught my attention. And I've never seen God limit himself in any way, shape, or form, that he couldn't do what he wanted to do, whatever he wanted to do, any way he wanted to do, because his will, not my will, his will be done. So God chooses at times to operate to accordingly so that we can have an assurance by way of reading the scriptures and programming our mind and understanding and seeing. But I personally think that everything you could possibly conceive, you conceive of in sci-fi is already listed in scripture, so I don't have any problem with my background. Maybe your liberality is preventing you from being conservative, and maybe your conservatality is liberating you from being liberal, and maybe somewhere in between you haven't gotten the god of ality or god ability. God out of it? <laughs> Sounds like speaking in tongues. God ability, God out of it. Wow. And he twists those words to bring you to an appreciation of himself by way of the means he chooses. Because it says that, frankly, the most sci fi concept I could ever think of in, sci in the New Testament was that God reveals even his Godhead in nature. Really? You mean like the Trinity? Personally, for sci-fi folks, we don't have any problem with the Trinity, and we don't have any problem with it being God the Father, whom is the Spirit, God the Son, okay, and God the Spirit, whom we say is one, whom we say is a person, but somehow, every time that we keep talking about God the Spirit as being a person, we keep seeing seven spirits before the throne, we keep seeing all these different aspects of the Spirit, but we don't quite see him quite as a person, because he doesn't seem to appear as a person, but he comes in every other form. Maybe there's something we haven't figured out yet. It's Christianity still. That spirit of God is a very confusing person. Oops. We won't go there either. But let's go where we can understand God. Where he meets us today. Where he walks with us and he talks with us. And we can trust in the Lord with all our heart. That we refuse to lean on our own understanding. Okay, maybe a little bit of our understanding that we choose to listen and apply the word as God makes it real for you. <laughs> it makes it quite entertaining for me <laughs> as I watch people tear and bite, slice and dice, run and have fun, to stomp and to chomp on the word of God and then make God into their own image. <laughs> Not me, man. I'll take God as he is and leave him to do what he wants. <laughs> That's why we are Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. God can do what he wants to do. Because I'm not signing up to become God. No, thank you. I think he fits the bill just fine. God's spirit bears witness with him. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men and not after Christ. Colossians 2.8 When I was a young Christian, I had my Bible and a hymn book and a few other books, including Andrew Murray and Thomas A. Kempis. 
and I got myself educated as well as I could by reading books. You know, that's what I did, was that I couldn't afford all these other things that everybody else did, you know? The times that I wanted to go to Calvary Chapel Bible College, one time they shut down, next time they didn't have it, next time I couldn't afford it. But I kept saying, no, 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 I teach you, you don't need to worry. You got me, that's all you need. And so I had to study the scriptures. Now, I did have my utmost for his highest. No wonder he's messed up. <laughs> and I did have a Thomas A. Kempis. I mean, it said imitation of Christ, so I thought that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Looked good to me. Still does. And I had, oh, what else? Daily Light, which to me was totally impressive. Streams in the Desert, which was like, Ah, yeah, yeah. And probably that's about it, you know, because those I could find free. Every once in a while, because I was in the VA hospitals, I'd read Daily Light, and that was kind of, I mean, Daily Bread, because those were like little booklets that you could pick up and, you know, kind of like read them. But for the most part, I was stuck with scriptures. And God, because he'd already spoken to me, and he'd already talked with me and given me all these gifts of spirit and all these other things, I didn't have a clue what the heck they were. My theology was like, hey, I've already experienced it, but now, what is it? <laughs> now that I've already done those things, look at the Acts, we got it all. We got, you know, we can prophesy, we can speak in tongues, we can interpret tongues, we can, you know, declare the word before it happens and those things that occur, that we can uh, have discernment of spirits and we can tell what spirits there are, we can cast out demons, we can raise the dead, we can walk on water, we can do all these things. But, my God, what are they called? What are they for? How do we apply them? What is it? Is it babble, rabble, dance and dabble that we're going to roll on the floor? Or is it going to be bark and shark and act like a shark and kind of like knife our way through theology and just spread the gold dust around? <laughs> I swear. No, I didn't fall into any of those traps or pitfalls. Rather, God has something in store for me that I kind of like got personal with Jesus and kind of like being with him and kind of you people out there stay away from me whatever it is you got I don't want to be infected because you scared me and I had to learn how to love you boy has that been an ongoing process I mean I didn't love myself so crucifying myself was easy <laughs> still working on that one but loving the brethren man lord how can you love people like that I mean man they all messed up <laughs> sort of. I read the philosophy of all the great minds, and many of those men did not believe in God, you know, and they did not believe in Christ. I remember reading White's Warfare of Science with Christianity, and if any man can read that and still say he is saved, he is saved by his reading, he is saved by the Holy Ghost within him, till that he is saved by the Holy Ghost within him, telling him that he is saved. I'll be honest with you, the only time I had a crisis of faith at some point in time was... Are you ready, Chuck? Chuck Smith had gotten a hold of Emmanuel Velikovsky's Wars in Collision, which talked about the scientific proofs of how it could be that the miracles of Moses were explained by natural phenomena, that Venus came into our solar system as a traveling, wandering planet, and that it caused some of the miracles that happened you know, in the Earth at the time, and also how it was possible that when the continents subdivided, it was because of a planet passing through. And all this was before conspiracy theories, before the Internet. It was way before we had top radio, before we had those wackos that are playing wacky khakis with Christianity. Oh, man. When they got element in the mirror and they got all these, you know, kind of like weird things like, you know, radio waves and God is a scientist, you know. Well, anyways. Before all that, I read Emmanuel Vilikoski's books and, boy, if I didn't have a personal relationship with God, just like the Holy Spirit said here, I probably would have doubted that there was a God. I would have believed in the scientific proofs that Vilikoski portrayed in the whole idea of catastrophism versus universalism and why I didn't believe in create or why I believed in 
maybe not creationism, but in a type of catastrophic events constantly occurring in the world, as opposed to the idea that Darwin has of uniformism, where everything is constant and remaining the same, and it's always kind of evolving in a pretty consistent and pattern-responsive way, which we already know based upon the world catastrophes. That ain't working. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I like to ask a creationist, or I like to ask an evolutionist, but how's that working for you? Evolved anything new lately? <laughs> oh, it ain't working. Oh, well, sorry. Hmm. Oops. Now we got a monkey's uncle messing around with a human's aunt? I don't think so. My aunt and my uncle, they were not messing around. And I'm sorry, but you can put a chimp, and you can put a baby, and they ain't gonna be, like, you know, coming out with some new species. No way, Jose. Just too weird, some of the things that they're playing with in genetics. But, did you know what I would do after I would read a chapter or two and find arguments that I could not possibly defeat? I would get down on my knees with tears, and I would thank God with joy that no matter what the book said, I know you, my Savior and my Lord. You know, I do like Tozer for saying thank you and getting down on his hands and knees and thanking the Lord. But you know what I did? I got mad. I got angry. I'd go to God. God? Oh, what is this? Vilikoski, Worlds and Collision. Why did Chuck Smith tell me to read this book? Now, I don't know whether you did it, they did it, who did it, we did it. What's happening here, God? I want to know the truth. I don't want ideas. I don't want facts. I, you know, God, I don't care. I swear up and down until the day I die, I'm going to hold every question I have in my mind until you tell me the answer, and I ain't doing nothing until you tell me, and then I know from you that you said, and this is it, and then I'll go out of my way to learn to prove it, but, you know, God, basically. I want to be solemn, and I don't want to fall into his trap, but I want all the wisdom that there is, because I want to be a scribe, after instructed unto the kingdom of righteousness, so that I can bring out my child so for the treasure of both old and new. And he did it to me. <laughs> he took me up on my offer. Was it an offer? He called me on the carpet. And he made me able to answer all the questions that come along that are, to me, really dumb. I mean, dumb dumb not being able to just simply look in the scriptures and find the answer, but that he gave me the reasons why people go off on tangents. That even made it harder to deal with humanity. Because frankly, everybody's got a point about why they're holding on to some pet idea. But me, I got mad and I wanted to know from God what the truth was. And so he did show me. And sometimes it took years. Sometimes it was through my life's experiences that I'd have to wait for the answer, but I never forgot the question. See, that was the difference. I got every answer to everything I was mad at God about. Because my mind compartmentalized and kept it there until God answered. Then it was like, he'd bring it up, there it'd be, he'd add a piece to it, throw it right back. Bring it out, add a piece, throw it right back. And eventually, he made it a complete picture. So that, for me, Sorry, as far as the scriptures are concerned, I have a complete knowledge of it. I know that the Word of God is complete. Oh, boy. And that though He may have used unusual means to get to the place where we understand it today, because of sci-fi, I have no problem with His orchestrations. We all play a different instrument, don't we? And I ain't gonna blow my own horn, <laughs> because believe me, to whom much is given, much is required. And I have been put through the ringer to learn what I've learned. <laughs> I didn't have it in my head, I had it in my heart. There is a great difference, you see. If we have it only in our heads, then philosophy may be of some help to us. But if we have it in our hearts, there is not much philosophy can do except to stand reverently, hat in hand, and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was, who is, and is to come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. In short, if you have to be reasoned into Christianity, some wise fellow can reason you out of it as well. 
That's one thing I learned a long time ago. You don't talk somebody into Christianity. As a matter of fact, the greatest reality crash that you could possibly give someone is to tell them that God is real and that God will speak to them and that God will eventually reveal to them that he is not only alive and well, but he will speak audibly, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and all ways to them if they choose him. Did you know that? Is your God that real? He's not. You mean, do you settle for putting feelings into faith and taking the scriptures by faith only and not by practical reality of believing what is said and expecting to hear God's voice? As Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. You mean, you thought that was only symbolic, that it was only allegorical, that it was only prophetic to the point of not being a practical reality? How's that? I'm happy that you believe. I'm happy that you know it. I'm happy that you have a handle on your faith and that you can apply it to scriptures. But you know, any Jew can read the Torah they have a very, very intellectual mind and can rationalize and argue and debate things to a point where a lot of people that are Christian quit being Christian in order to follow philosophical Judaism in a rabbinical argumentation that they discover a rationalization for their faith as opposed to the realization of the fulfillment of Scripture. There's a big difference there. But the intellect, I highly recommend, if I were not knowing God, Judaism. But since I know God is real, I can say the fulfillment of all of Christianity is in a personal, interactive relationship with Jesus and knowing the Father. Because Jesus said we could. He said, I don't want you to just know me. And that I go and I send the Spirit to you to know me better. But I want you to know the Father, for He loves you more than I do. For He sent me. And in that is the summation of what you should do. If you're somehow less than what you think you should be, and don't know Jesus to the intimacy that He wants you to, you must go to a place alone with God and trust in the Lord with all your heart, be not in your own understanding. In all your ways, sneeze with him and he'll direct your path. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will. Because your path will lead straight to God. And you will hear God speak.